I've received a parcel this morning from Banggood and it's basically a kit to make a small clock and these are the ingredients that come with it and also to my surprise this is the case which is basically a clear plastic case which you screw together which I thought actually was an accessory that you had to pay for but the fact that it comes complete is a nice surprise. My first impressions are that um, it's actually a very nice product. This is the PCB. It's a double sided with component values marked on it. You can see there quite clearly the through holes. Now in the instructions it refers to these as Nixie tubes, which they are plainly not. These are um, LEDs. Now you can have a choice of various colours, but I cannot remember for the life of me which colour ones I purchased. These are the two chips. One of them, of course, is the actual clock function, and they seem to be genuine components. This is an STC. I'll put the numbers on later because I can't actually see them at the moment. And there's a loose bag here containing the resistors, capacitors and the odd transistor and um, well all the other components. Also in the package comes this pretty standard USB. Now just before we start I've got the bench pretty well set up now. I should be using my Annex soldering iron. It's in the days when soldering irons were actually made in England. Isn't that amazing? Now the other thing I've got is nice lead solder. You can't beat lead solder. And this one I've had for many years as well. Come from good old Maplin. So this solder is actually, it's multi-core and has built-in flux. And that's all I find necessary to use. 60% tin, 40% lead. A magnifying glass because some of these components are absolutely tiny this came off an old Sony um, camcorder and is absolutely brilliant and of course the meter I always test the components before I put them in and then if it doesn't work at least you know there's a 99% chance that all the components you've used are okay I always measure the resistors and I've got a little capacitance meter, which I, I haven't got on the bench yet, which I should check the capacitors. And also I should just check that the transistors are at least not short or open. One thing I always do when I first get a kit of parts is to obviously identify all the components. And where the resistors come like this, I would always write the value on them after I've tested them. Now. To my sheer delight, the supplier of this kit, Banggood, have actually written the resistor values on there. Look at that. 330 ohms. I shall just check that to make sure that is correct. Um, this is where the small magnifying glass comes in because these are so small that um, unless you're 12 years old with perfect eyesight, I can't even see the colours on them. Now, everybody has different ways of securing components, and I use a very simple one. I've put this, res this resistor in there, which is a 10K, and if I turn the board over, you can see at the moment the wires are just sticking through. Now, to hold it in place, I just simply bend it very slightly, like that, and then solder it. In the meantime, the resistor won't fall out. Some people bend them flat with the board, but then they are quite hard to take out. Well, we have pretty well finished the basic construction. I haven't put the ICs on yet, and I haven't put the battery kit in the board. Every time I've, I've made a joint, I've checked it with the glass because they're so close to the pins of the adjacent component. Um, I don't think I've made any shorts so far. I will obviously check it very carefully before I finally apply power. Quite optimistic that everything is okay. We do have a few components spare, which is always worrying, and they're all they're all resistors. 
um, there's two 330 ohms, there's one 10k and one whatever that was 4.7k um, I'm quite confident that there's no spare holes for those and they are literally spares I suppose they cost so little it, they, they don't bother to count them they just pull them off the braid anyway next stage the LED right well here's the moment of truth it's all assembled and to be fair Oh, it's not all assembled. I've just remembered I haven't put the uh, little battery in, but we'll do that before we switch it on. And the hardest point was actually getting this chip into the socket because there's so many legs on it and you have to bend them all slightly in. And I found the best thing is to put the chip on the side of the bench here and just lean on it. Um, but I actually got it um, one of the legs missing and I had to take the chip out again. So the small one went in no problem at all. But anyway, we've done it and um, just remains to be seen if it works. So we'll go over to the computer, which I've just turned on, because at the moment it's my only source of five volts. Right, we're over to the computer side now. I've put the little battery in and uh, this is for power. Here we've got the other end, which I'm just going to plug into the computer and stand back for smoke well let's hope not here we go Whee! now I don't know how that's coming out on the on the it's actually extremely bright but um, it's not coming out on the camera very well for some reason um, not quite sure why maybe if I it is very bright in here let's shield it a bit now I think it's purely because no. well you can see if I pick it, pick it out of focus uh, the numbers are clearly lit up oh it's changing to 3 centigrade now that's straight out of the box I haven't touched it yet but that is actually extremely bright and looks really good but for some reason the green isn't being picked up by the camera well, strange. I don't know why that is. Perhaps it's my camera's not very sensitive to green. Well, I'm delighted to say everything seems to be working fine. But I can't get it to take a very good picture. Um, I'm looking on my monitor and it looks white and washed out. But in reality, it's really, it really looks good. I'm, I'm trying to find some other way of displaying this so that it, um, you'll be impressed with it. Well, this is the case. Um, box of screws and some bits of plastic. Now, let's hope my mechanical assembly skills are at least something equal to my electronic skills. <laughs> because I've got to work out how this makes a box. I'll come back to you when I've worked it out. Well I finally finished it and got it in the case. Now the case itself was an absolute nightmare to get in. Now it's, maybe it's because it's my brain's not capable of assembling five bits of plastic. <laughs> but there's so many different ways and I've actually still assembled it incorrectly because I've, don't, I've just this second noticed there's a small hole here and that's where the heat sensing component should poke through whereas mine is there so I've got this top piece round the wrong way. Now this is actually a photograph from the Banggood site and that's where I discovered how it looked like it should go together and you can see the component here sticking out the top. Now I don't think that's a terribly good idea sticking out like that because it looks ugly. Since I last spoke to you, I've actually turned this top piece round so that um, the thermistor below it is actually below the hole, which um, should aid the temperature sensing. And the other thing I've had to do, I've had to make the holes that these two switches poke through somewhat bigger. Um, because when you mount the switches, there's no leeway at all and I found when I put it all together the switches just catch the plastic slightly and make 
setting up the timer relatively difficult. So I've taken them out and I've drilled the hole um, just a fraction bigger and it seems to be a lot better. So that's the end of this very quick review. Ooh. Now I didn't do that purposely, that's obviously the alarm. <laughs> I don't quite know how you stop it. Right, that's how you stop it, you press one of the buttons. I'm still learning, but uh, that, that was a nice surprise, I didn't know it was going to do that. Incidentally, I had to pay for this, Banggood did not supply this, I'm not being paid by anybody, it's purely a kit I bought for my own personal use, and if it was crap I would have said so, uh, but as it happens, as you can see, it's not crap. It's a bit fiddly, but a bit of fun, it's taken me three hours to put it together <laughs> and the last hour was putting it in the box thanks for watching bye